My task today uh, is in about 10 minutes time uh, to speak about um, the use of uh, ketamine as an analgesic agent and uh, that is a challenging task. Uh, but I'll try to give you some flavor of um, oops, flavor of um, the there we go, the current practice, which is uh, quite rampant about the scientific base and uh, what I see as uh, outstanding issues for the future. And uh, when it comes to uh, reported use, uh, there's a plethora of, of uh, different um, conditions that people have tried ketamine with. And um, most of uh, these colleagues that have used ketamine haven't published anything, but there are a few uh, clinical reports. Uh, one such is uh, neuropathic pain after spinal cord injury, where uh, there were reported beneficial effects. And um, there was this study by Buchheit, a recent one, it showed um, opioid sparing in ICU mechanically vent ventilated patients. And uh, opioid sparing is uh, something that you often see in, in these uh, reports. Um, my dot disappeared. Horunon uh, Dararun. Can you see the red dot? I can't see it. Oh, there it is. Um, ketamine is, is interesting in, in, in uh, an aspect, another aspect too, that it can be uh, administered uh, in very different uh, modes. It, uh, most of the, the, the ways that you can um, administer drugs to the body can be used with ketamine. And um, um, people have tried, Mercadanti is a, uh, an oncologist working in palliative medicine. Uh, he's tried something called burst administration, where you give ketamine as a short-term burst. Uh, intermittent infusions of different kinds have been used for diverse indications, and often uh, these reports are favorable. Um, it has been shown in uh, an RCT to be morphine sparing in renal colic. Uh, it can pr um, prevent fentanyl induced hyperalgesia and morphine to tolerance. It can attenuate post operative uh, hyperalgesia. And this is an early study, but it's, it's a, a very interesting study because Stubhaug and his uh, co-workers, they showed very interesting uh, effects, but only short-term for th three days. Uh, ketamine has been used orally in spite of a low bi oral bioavailability, and uh, Marchetti has looked into that, uh, uh, and he um, could see that in 50 patients, um, uh, the majority of them had uh, some benefit uh, in a five-year follow-up. It has been used topically, as I said, and um, uh, it has also been used, as most of you know, in, in the emergency department for uh, different types of pain. And, uh, of course, that's quite promising, but it's also the low dose I'm speaking of now. In status asthmaticus and in status epilepticus, it has also been uh, shown to have a favorable effects even though these are not uh, very... Uh, um, these studies uh, are more of anecdotal reports than um, scientific studies. When it comes to the basic science, uh, it has been found that the NMDA receptor has subunits, and uh, this might have pharmacological implications, and in our case, particularly for ketamine. Um, what the future looks like there is uh, unknown at the present. As you probably know, ketamine also has uh, two enantiomeres, uh, and um, they differ in their 
They differ in their um, uh, pharmacology, uh, pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic properties, but the clinical significance uh, of that, I would say, is quite unclear. It's not, to my mind, uh, absolutely clear that, uh, for example, the S enantiomer <coughs> would be uh, preferable. The metabolism has been uh, studied and found to depend on several uh, cytochrome uh, enzymes. Uh, the, the effects on brain con connectivity have also been studied, and uh, uh, it has been shown that low-dose ketamine can affect, uh, affect pain modulation by uh, altering um, brain connectivity. And then there are the anti-inflammatory effects, and it has all, people have also produced um, esters, varieties of the ketamine molecules, in order to perhaps get a better side of effect to side effect ratio, but that is also at present unclear. When it comes to clinical science, uh, it's uh, ketamine's effect uh, for in the short term, in short term treatment, treatment on uh, uh, non-cancer pain, both chronic and acute, is uh, quite well established. Uh, <clears throat> uh, there is a problem um, of toxicity, which has um, come to the fore in later years. And um, one of the, the toxicity on the, on the urinary system is uh, quite troublesome, I would say. But there's also liver toxicity and uh, cognitive effects. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay, now let's see, where were we? Um, um, it has been shown to uh, prevent um, uh, persistent post-surgical pain, but only in the very short term. Uh, this study, uh, or this review, found no effect at uh, three or six months. Um, it has a solid role in pre-hospital analgesia, in hospice uh, care as an adjunct to opioids, and um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the urinary tract dysfunction is a potentially very serious um, problem, but the deta details of that uh, are uncertain. It has been shown to be effective uh, on, in CRPS uh, and um, um, in uh, anti-hyperalgesia. Okay, so what are then are the, the outstanding issues? We need to um, get a better hold on the dosing of low-dose ketamine for acute and post-operative pain. Uh, that's quite unclear at the present. We also need to know if there is any long-term benefit of chronic pain. We need to find out if um, there are analgesic, true analgesic effects of ketamine in low dose, or if all the effects we see are uh, due to antihyperalgesia. Uh, we need to establish the dose-response curve for the antihalgesic effect. Uh, we need to, to find out more about the urinary tract uh, uh, dysfunction and um, more about the neuroapoptosis, uh, which is um, troublesome. Uh, uh, it, it appears that uh, ketamine has um, uh, neuroprotective effects, but in, in a, uh, the effects on the developing brain might be damaging. And then there's also the question of whether one uh, enantiomer or the other has some merit compared to the other or to the racemic mixture. And we need to have administration technology to apply it um, due to the low bio, uh, the oral bioavailability. Now, uh, ketamine uh, uh, celebrated its 50th anniversary a few years ago. And uh, we've had it for more than 50 years, and uh, I'd like to say it's still a promising drug, but uh, we still have more questions than answers, unfortunately.
Thank you.